Discovering that the ashes I've been carrying, believing they were my late sisters were actually fake, shattered me. My mom had scattered my sister's real ashes years ago, without involving me or my brother. When I confronted her, she dismissed my feelings and turned the blame on me. Am I overreacting for cutting her out after this betrayal and telling my brother and dad the truth? My parents got divorced when I was young. After my mom remarried, they had another child, my little sister. Unfortunately, she passed away in an accident four years ago at the age of 14. People often say that the firsts after a death are the hardest. But what about when there should have been firsts, like getting ready for prom, that will never happen? It's a different kind of pain. Recently, my mom and I were talking, and she told me that the ashes I had been carrying, thinking they were my sisters, were actually just ashes from burnt wood. She had already scattered my sister's ashes without involving me or my brother, in the burial plot she shared with my stepdad. She couldn't fathom my rage because, to her, sentiment and emotions are the important aspects, not that it's physically my sister. My anger is prompted by the lies and the fact those sentiments and emotions are attached to something not my little sister, and I had no idea she cast her ashes on a plot she wouldn't have cared about. I screamed at her to get out of my house, locking the door behind her and calling out my stepdad to pick her up. I threw the necklace out the window to the front lawn, then regretted it and tore it out of her hands when she picked it up. As she would say it, I made a scene and embarrassed her. I kept screaming and calling her a liar whenever she tried to explain herself or get back inside. I was threatening to call the cops on her when my stepdad finally showed up and took her away. He called me the next day and left a message saying that he wanted to talk about what happened and how he understood why I was angry and hurt. He just wants to talk, but I need to talk to my mother too about this, because she's a grieving mother, emphasis his, and my sister's death was a huge blow to the entire family. Everyone is trying to regain our bearings still, so some kindness is needed. All I can think of right now is my mom's heartbroken face as I ripped my necklace with my sister's ashes out of her hands or the way she turned away from me, crying as my stepdad ushered her into the car. I called her names, and I let my pain and rage take over me, but I can't get over the lies. Four years of thinking my necklace had my sister, of thinking she was right by my heart, and it all came undone because my mom had too much to drink. How long would she have let me think this? How long would the lie continue? I gave my mother an ultimatum of either telling my brother and father or I will. She refused to because you reacted so horribly. And she told me not to tell because you're doing this to hurt me and you're just going to hurt them. So I told them. I sat my dad and brother down and explained that the necklaces didn't have the right ashes in them. I've never seen my dad break like that, and I've never heard my brother scream at me like that. He was angry that I knew before him and didn't immediately tell because, this is shit you tell me, you needed to tell me, we tell each other everything, but he started crying and apologizing to me, admitting he's just so mad about what mom did and he can't handle it. So I guess that's clearly something else my brother and I share. We get overwhelmed initially before cooler heads prevail. My dad looked gutted, but he was clearly trying to piece himself back together. He said a lot of the same other people had said to me on my other post, we can get some of the dirt from the plot where she was scattered, the necklace has the meaning we attribute to it, and she's still with us even if her body hasn't been physical with us. I feel bad because of some of what my mom said, that is, the bit about the necklace being important even without her ashes in it, but I was able to accept that much easier from him. Maybe because he didn't lie to me for four years and dropped a bomb on me out of nowhere because I pulled apart a lie. He held my brother and me as we cried, and he apologized for the pain. He said it wasn't fair that I had to be the adult when my mother should have told all of us a lot sooner. Dad's going to try to talk to my stepfather to find the plot because my mom has been refusing to talk to us anymore, not answering messages or picking up the phone. Her social media has even gone dark. He's going to find out where the plot is and go to the site. I don't know if I could if it were up to me. It just feels like the final bit of proof that this fucked up nightmare is real, and my sister is mixed with dirt and rocks and grass of an unmaintained and unvisited plot. My mom and I always had some issues, but that's normal. This is worse than anything, and we had a rough patch when I came out that we didn't even talk, but we mended fences after. I can't see ever forgiving her, not with how she dropped this on me, blamed me for my reaction, and left me to do what she should have done. To top it off, she won't even show the decency to explain why or even talk to me. When we were discussing cremation, it was agreed we would all get a necklace with the ashes. My mind keeps going over things that just didn't add up fully, times she almost slipped, or things that make complete sense now. 
she almost left behind her necklace on a trip and didn't freak out like I would have because she knew where my sister was the whole time. She volunteered to separate the ashes and gave dad the rest. I assume those ashes are the same as ours, but they are fake. God, this whole thing just makes me want to curl up in a hole and never see the light of day again. I've been on and off crying all week without being able to stop or just so angry I could scream. In the middle of my damn work day, and suddenly, I'm rushing to the bathroom to hide the fact I'm breaking all over again, because I can't stop my thoughts. I quit smoking after my sister died, but I picked it right back up again. My dad has been calling me every day to check in on me, and remind me of how much he loves me, and how much my brother loves me I think he's afraid. My brother has come over each day since he talked with his girlfriend to make sure I ate something. I don't know how to end this post. I feel lost and like I don't know anything anymore. I feel like a burden because my dad and brother are both dealing with the revelation too, but they're clearly thinking of me and checking in on me, I'm going to look into grief counseling, but the therapist I saw after my sister died isn't practicing anymore, and my insurance isn't accepted by a lot of therapists. I try to remind myself that my little sister wouldn't have minded so much becoming woven into a tapestry of grass and flowers, and then I can visit her once we know where she was cast and make sure her sight is always beautiful. While I was in excruciating pain from a medical emergency and begging for help, my girlfriend ignored my calls and messages to continue partying at a club. Now I'm torn between ending our five-year relationship or giving her a second chance. W.I.B.T. for breaking up with her? I'm a 22-year-old male and have been in a relationship with my girlfriend who is also 22 for five years. We've been together since high school and until recently, I've always considered her to be my future wife. I've even bought a ring and planned on proposing over the coming months. Last weekend, it was my girlfriend's best friend's birthday and they booked a private lounge at a club to celebrate. Since I wasn't invited and don't enjoy clubbing, I was looking forward to spending the evening alone and just binge watching Netflix or something. My girlfriend left around 9 p.m., and I settled on the couch to watch some YouTube. Around 11 p.m., I started to feel a distinct stomach pain, similar to the pain you experience when someone hits you in the groin. The pain started getting worse, and it felt like my right testicle was starting to swell. The moment I tried to get up and grab my phone to inspect whatever the fuck was happening to me, I just collapsed to the floor. That was probably the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. Imagine being pelted in the nuts over and over again. I did manage to crawl to the table next to the couch to get my phone. I immediately tried calling my girlfriend, but she declined my call. I then texted her that something was wrong and she could come home immediately. The club she went to is about a five minute walk from our apartment. I just put the phone down and started throwing up because of the pain. After throwing up for about a minute, it felt like the pain started to cool down a bit and I grabbed my phone again and that's when I saw her response. She just replied with a what is it, unamused face. I tried calling her again but she declined as expected. I then texted her that I needed to go to the hospital now. She asked for what, and I replied that my balls hurt. I then just dialed for emergency services. I explained my situation to the emergency responder, and she asked if there was somebody who could drive me to the hospital, and I stupidly said yes. I thought my girlfriend would be home soon and she would drive me to the hospital. I felt embarrassed to call an ambulance because my balls hurt. After I told the emergency responder this, she then told me that she would call me again in 10 minutes to make sure I was being driven to the hospital. I then put down the phone and went back to vomiting on our carpet. Again, after the pain went away for a bit, I checked my phone and saw that my girlfriend had just responded with laughing emojis. I tried to call her again but as expected, she just declined again. She texted me that this wasn't the time to play games, and she then told me that if I texted or called her again, she would block my number. I tried calling her again but she declined. When I tried calling her a second time I realized she had blocked me. I went back to curling up on the floor and now I started shivering. At this point I didn't care about being embarrassed, so I just called emergency services again and asked for an ambulance. It felt like an eternity, but the ambulance eventually came and rushed me to the hospital. I don't remember much of surgery since I was sedated but I remember waking up eventually and my right testicle was being stitched together. The doctor informed me that I had a testicular torsion and I was extremely lucky to reach the hospital in time. I could have easily been forced to surgically remove my testicle. I checked my phone and saw the missed calls and messages my girlfriend left me. In summary, she came home from clubbing and smelled the vomit in our apartment. When she saw the vomit on our carpet, she got mad and tried searching the apartment to find me. When she realized I wasn't there, it hit her that I was being serious. I just texted her which hospital I was staying in and my room number, and then I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning and saw my girlfriend sleeping on a couch next to my bed. After she woke up, she started bombarding me with apologies. 
She thought I was joking, that I was trying to ruin their night etc. I didn't have the energy to argue, so I just kept quiet. I was beyond hurt by what she did, and I wanted to break up with her then and there. Why the fuck would somebody ignore messages where their partner is begging them to come home? Not only that, she stayed in the club until 3am and didn't even consider going home to check on me. She did stay with me in the hospital for the remaining two days I was admitted there and did take good care of me, but I was still beyond pissed at her. Ever since coming home yesterday I've been wanting to dump her, but at the same time I feel like she genuinely thought I was joking and made a mistake. I feel conflicted and don't know how to proceed in this situation. WIBTA if I dumped her? Am I overreacting? How would you guys navigate this mess? Edit. Just to clarify. No, I never had an issue with her going out in the first place, nor have I ever pulled pranks for her to come home from a night out. No, I have never pulled any malicious pranks on my girlfriend to get her to come home early from a night out or anything, neither do I have an issue with her going out, as long as she doesn't come home at like 6am. And no, I've never blown up her phone like that while she was out with friends. We usually go out together since we share the same friend groups. Here are mine and her messages from WhatsApp in order since people thought I just texted her, my balls hurt or something, translated. Me, declined my first two calls her name. Please come home. Something is wrong. Her? Can't talk right now. What is it unamused face? Me, I tried calling her again. I need to go to the hospital. Her? What? Me, again, I tried calling her twice. My balls hurt. Please come now. Something is wrong. Her, rolling on the floor laughing 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 rolling on the floor laughing. Me, I tried calling her again twice after calling emergency services. Her, I swear, don't bother me again, or I'm blocking you. Let me fucking enjoy my night out. Me, I tried calling her again twice and got blocked. At this point the pain was too bad to try anything with her anymore, and I just called an ambulance. Her next message after unblocking me at 2am, my name, why the fuck is there vomit in the living room, and where the fuck are you? Why is the front door unlocked if you left somewhere? She then went into a full mental breakdown as she realized I was serious about going to the hospital over 70 messages. Yes it was stupid of me to expect her to drive me to the hospital since she was drinking, but again, in that type of pain, you don't think clearly. I needed her more for moral support, and I did it out of instinct. Not immediately calling an ambulance was also stupid of me, I was in a lot of pain, but stupidly at the time, I thought that whatever I was going through would eventually calm down, and driving to the hospital would be better than calling an ambulance. Also, in hindsight, my being embarrassed about calling an ambulance over my balls, was definitely also really stupid. The amount of mental gymnastics some of you did in my comments to paint me as some sort of dweeb or emotionally needy person for bothering my GF was truly mind-blowing to me, I promise you that if my girlfriend was in my position and I ignored her, none of you would be defending me. Now for the update. Thank you to all those who wish me a speedy recovery. I'm doing much better now. Not being able to go to work for the next three weeks is definitely a bummer. I work for my dad's construction company, and my job requires lifting a lot of heavyweights. I'm also prohibited from having any sex for the next two to three weeks as well. I might have also developed some trauma due to the pain. I randomly get the same sensation again, and it's driving me nuts, see what I did there. As for my girlfriend and me, it's complicated. As so many of you and my mom told me, five years is definitely a long time to be just throwing away without having a proper conversation with her. So I did just that. I told her how hurt I felt by everything. I mentioned the following points. She ignored my messages and declined my calls, yes, clubs are loud, but where I'm from, there are smoking areas where you can definitely have a conversation over the phone. Blocking me after I tried calling her. She did not check on me once, even though the club she went to was only a five minute walk from our apartment. She is angry about the vomit instead of concerned. After hearing that, she got defensive and told me that I could have conveyed my situation better, and that she genuinely thought I was joking. She was drunk, and wasn't thinking clearly. She also told me that it couldn't have been that painful, and I was over-exaggerating. I then told her yes, I could have phrased my messages better, and I apologized for that, but I then described the pain I was in and told her that I barely had the strength to text her, 
let alone send her a detailed description of what was happening to me, and definitely couldn't think straight throughout everything. After hearing what I said, she started crying and apologizing for what she had done. She told me we wouldn't have been having this conversation if she knew how serious it was. She then also apologized for her being mad over the vomit. According to her, she was drunk and tired, and was just expressing frustration. I then asked her why she thought I was joking, and if she was cheating on me because this was seriously out of character for her, hence why I immediately trusted her with this. She started crying harder, and she looked like I just slapped her in the face. She told me that she just thought I was being insecure about her being in the club with a bunch of guys, and no, she wasn't cheating on me and would never do something like that. We then hugged for a solid 10 minutes after that. The next part was really hard for me, but I told her I needed some space to gather my thoughts and told her she needed to stay with her parents for the time being. She immediately started having a mental breakdown and asked if I was breaking up with her. I told her I wasn't sure and needed time to see if I still trusted her after all of this, and what she did was beyond disrespectful. How could I trust someone with my life after they pulled something like this? I then told her that we were young and this mess was mostly caused by our immaturity. This entire situation was an important life lesson for both of us, regardless of whether we stayed together. After begging a bit more, she put her head down and started packing a few essentials. Before leaving, she told me she would be willing to do anything to make up for this, and then I could take as much time as I needed. She then gave me a big kiss and laughed. That was two days ago, and this is where we currently stand. I still give her updates on my healing, but besides that we don't contact each other. I'm really torn right now. I still don't have that trust in her, but her owning up to her mistake shows that she knows she fucked up and is remorseful. This is definitely something out of the ordinary for her, but there will have to be major boundaries and new rules set. I can think of the following. If she blocks me again for anything equals blocking herself from ever seeing me again. Ignoring my messages will not be tolerated anymore. If she goes out alone again, she has to pick up if I call, regardless of the situation. As many of you suggested, having an emergency code like hospital or something would probably have to be implemented. I'm not going to abuse any of these boundaries, but I just want peace of mind, knowing that my partner has my best interest at heart even when she is physically not around me, but I. Again I just want to thank you guys for everything, and this whole experience was definitely an eye-opener for me. Should I get back together with her? If so, would my demands be reasonable? And could I add something more? WIBTA if I dumped her over this whole saga. Edit, I don't know what happened to the bullet points in my post. Seems to be a weird bug or something. After enduring years of a sexless marriage and unfulfilled needs, I told my wife she couldn't get professional massages if I couldn't have sex. When she defied this, I filed for divorce. Now, friends and family think I'm overreacting. I take for feeling betrayed and taking drastic action. My soon-to-be ex-wife and I are both in our late 30s. We've been together for 12 years and married for 10. We are in a dead bedroom, it was entirely dead for 6 months before I filed for divorce, and had been on life support for 5 to 6 years prior to that. We both wanted to be younger parents and have two kids. We conceived our daughter almost immediately after getting married. When she was 6 months old, we started trying to have a second child, but it never happened. After 3 years we sought help from fertility specialists, and discovered that we both had significant reproductive issues. The doctor informed us that our daughter was nothing short of a miracle, and it was against all odds that we not only conceived but carried her to term. It was after this that our sex life began to seriously decline. Initially I thought it was just the pain of finding out and knowing we wouldn't be able to afford the fertility options, and I figured it would get better over time. It never did, it only got worse. Five years ago, I would say we had sex 15 to 20 times that year, in 2023, we had sex three times. I have tried everything to improve this, spicing things up, talking, suggested counseling. I more than pull my weight around the house. We both work basically the same hours. I'm telling this because the usual stuff I read on Reddit about how the wife does it all is not even close to true. Over time, I have grown more and more resentful. The thing that makes me the most resentful is she knows I have a high libido and just doesn't care. I on the other hand know she loves to be rubbed on slash massage and I never took that from her. I probably rub on her 325 times a year. Almost every night I will rub her claves, shins, ankles and feet. 4 to 5 nights a month. 
I will go big and do neck, shoulder, back, butt hamstring, quads, shins, calves, ankles, and feet. I noticed that doing the big massages was the best way to get sex, as she was more likely to allow me to do the foreplay things I knew would work on her if I had already done this prep. I did them more often a few years ago, but now, not as much. The success rate was never that great, maybe 20% of the time, but in the last two years, we are definitely in the single digits. When we hit the four months of absolutely no sex, I decided I wasn't rubbing on her ever again. It only took three days for her to notice, and she asked me to. I told her no, and I got angry. I said, why should I when you don't give a fuck about what I want? Obviously it was not my finest moment, and a huge argument followed. Things got ice cold at home, but I wasn't getting in. I was tired of all of it. A few weeks ago, she told me that it was fine and that I would just start seeing a professional mass use. I said, then I will start seeing sex workers. She said that was cheating. I said, fine, I won't, but you will not get a massage from anyone else, that is also cheating. She said I was being ridiculous, and I said, no, it's being touched in an intimate way by another, if I can't have that, neither can you, and I swear to fucking God, if you do, I will file for divorce that day. The following weekend she went to get her nails done, I know how long it takes for her to get her nails done. She came back almost an hour and a half later than I expected. She didn't say anything, she just acted normally. I got on her credit card app on my phone, and sure enough, there was a $95 in charge to the goddamn massage person in the same strip mall as the nail place. I lost it, and when I did, so did she. I think we both let out years of frustration on each other. True to my word though, I called a divorce lawyer on Monday. The only part that upset me was my lawyer said that based on these circumstances, I couldn't list infidelity as the reason for divorce and had to go with irreconcilable differences. Anyway, she has been telling people we are divorcing because she got a massage. Since then, I have had a number of family members slash friends call me and say I'm an asshole. Some of them, even when I tell them my real reasons, still think I'm an asshole and that my reasons aren't good enough. Personally, I think getting a massage when told not to is plenty of reasoning. So am I the asshole here? Personal note, I reread this, and I know it comes off as angry. But I am angry at myself for wasting so many years. But I'm also angry because this was just the ultimate fuck you. She just went and did it anyway, and didn't even try to hide it. I literally went to the same place next to the nail salon, and used her CC, which I paid for, but I wasn't going to see the charge. While this is not official by any means at this point, I'll take it as a positive. STBX asked me to meet yesterday to hash out some details of the divorce, and it was actually pretty productive. We agreed on a 50-50 custody arrangement. Basically, a week there, a week here. Becomes two weeks during summer break. We each keep our own retirements, splitting the savings 60 to 40 in her favor. Each keeps our primary vehicle. I made a huge concession on the house, it was my idea. I want our child to grow up in that house. Ours was a three-bedroom, with a finished basement and nice yard. I don't want her to live in a pair of two-bedroom apartments. This is important to me, I'll be paying a housing alimony each month to offset some costs since my rent and projected utilities etc. are much lower than the mortgage slash utilities slash upkeep. We did agree on some stipulations that would end that. If another adult should move in, that is, a boyfriend slash new husband, my obligation ends immediately. My obligation ends when our daughter moves out or turns 22, whichever comes first. There are a bunch of different scenarios we talked about, in terms of splitting the house if she wishes to sell it. I won't bore you with all of that, but basically as long as I continue to make the alimony payment, I'll get 40% at the time of sale or a buyout. I'm turning all this over to my lawyer this week, and he will write it up and send it to her lawyer. While she definitely had a, you are beneath me vibe during our meeting, I'm happy this doesn't look like it will be an ugly divorce, as I was very worried it would be. I assume our daughter is the motivating factor for her sudden, amicable attitude.